Hi everyone, Pierre here from Interfly Fishing and welcome to our channel. In today's video we'll be looking at the absolute minimum gear that you need to start fly fishing. Now if you're new to fly fishing, I must warn you that it is an absolute slippery slope, especially when it comes to gear. But you don't need all of this extra paraphernalia and accessories in order to catch a fish, right? And that is what it's all about, catching a fish. So in this video we'll be focusing on the absolute essentials that you need to catch your first fish on fly. I've seen so many new anglers step into this trap and buying all these unnecessary accessories and fly fishing gear. And what happens is it, it shifts their focus off what is really important and that is to understand and to learn how to catch fish. And that's what it really is all about. So if you're new to fly fishing and you haven't bought gear yet, sit back and relax and just follow my advice here and you'll soon be catching a fish. Let's start with what I think is the most important item of all or items of all and this is what separates fly fishing from other forms of fishing and that is the fly. The fly is designed to imitate a natural food source for whatever fish species you're targeting or it's designed to aggravate or entice a take. There are many different types of flies, each with a specific design or application. If you'd like more information on that topic, I did a video on this a couple of weeks ago. You can find the link to that in the description down below. For the newcomers to the sport who don't yet understand flies and fly selection, my recommendation is to go down to your local fly shop or the fly shop in the area that you will be fly fishing and ask them what flies work in that specific area and help them choose you an array of flies to use. The other accessory that you need, definitely need if you're going to fish or get a couple of flies, is a fly box. This is absolutely necessary and this is used to store and neatly organize your flies. Not like my fly box, it's absolutely in a state of disaster. The fly is connected to the fly line and the leader with what we call tippet, which is basically just a high grade level piece of monofilament or fluorocarbon. Now you'll probably need a couple of options on the water. Like here I've got 5X. The X den denation is just for uh, the diameter. It just speaks about the diameter. So this is 5X, this is 6X and this is 7X. So it's good to have a couple of options for the water that you're fishing, which is applicable to the fish species that you're targeting. This means that you are highly adaptable on the water and that's also super important. Once again, there are so many options, but what you need to do is speak to your local fly shop when you pick up your flies, speak to them and ask what tip of diameter they would recommend for the specific stretch of water and fish you are targeting. Because the tippet material we just spoke about is made from high quality monofilament or fluorocarbon, it's generally a lot more expensive. It's really, it can become really expensive if you build complete leaders out of it. And for this reason, I advise getting straight leader material, like this is Maxima Ultra Green, or this is Stroft GTM. So this is just thicker, slightly thicker material that you can taper down, uh, that is made from a more affordable leader material. You could also opt for tapered leaders, which are designed to transfer the energy to the fly a lot better. This will just make you present your fly a lot better to the fish. Always carry spare tapered leaders if you are choosing tapered leaders or spare leader material. It's not very common that you need to replace an entire leader, but it's something that you need to be able to do on the water. In most cases, the flies that we use are generally very lightweight. And this enables us to deliver the flies very softly and make more accurate and more delicate presentations. If you were to throw these light flies with conventional rods, you'd probably just end up casting a meter or two or a couple of yards, and this isn't really great. If you're fishing conventional rods, the weight is usually built into the lure or the bait, or it's positioned relatively close to the lure or the bait. And this is what loads the rod as you cast, and this weight also carries the momentum to get your lure or your bait to the intended um, or the desired target. Now this is where fly fishing really differs because the fly is very lightweight. We use the weight of the line 
to load the rod. And it is this weight that carries the fly through the air to your intended target. The fly line is absolutely essential, almost just as essential as the fly itself. And this, this is what helps us to create that beautiful cast and helps us to penetrate into wind and, and cast a good distance. You get various types of fly line. This is a DR5, what we call a DR5. It's a sinking fly line. Then you get intermediate fly lines. And probably the most common fly line used everywhere these days is a floating fly line. So the line not only has the purpose of carrying the fly and loading the rod to the um, intended target, but also it helps you to fish the fly in various parts of the water column. Most modern fly lines are between 80 and 110 yards in length. And if you aren't necessarily going to cast all of that line out, it would be an absolute pain in the butt to manage this line. It would just get tangled everywhere all the time. And this is one of the reasons we use a fly reel. A fly reel is absolutely essential to store your line and the backing that we will discuss after this. It also is essential if you are fishing to larger fish or fish that are a lot stronger or known to run because the reel then not only serves as a line holder but it also has a drag that you can adjust which helps you to fight the fish and to land it a lot sooner. If you're fishing to substantially sized fish or fish species that are known to run across a flat or down a river it's essential that you have backing behind your fly line because 100 yards of fly line isn't really that much that's like 33 meters and a big fish that runs down a river can easily eat into that in a couple of seconds and then if you don't have backing the knot will go tight which connects the fly line to your reel and you'll just simply break off and lose the fish how much backing is necessary well that's like asking how long is a rope how far will this fish run it's it's hard to say and there's no general rule of thumb for standard freshwater fishing applications if you're fishing five weights six weights around there or even less 100 yards is more than sufficient if you are regularly targeting big bonefish with an eight weight i would say maybe go up 200 250 yards if you are fishing for blue water species like sailfish off the back of a ski boat go up go up to 500 yards i mean it, it it depends on your application but for most freshwater applications 100 yards should be more than enough so we spoke earlier about how we use the fly line the weight of the fly line to load the rod to send it and propel the fly to its intended application and in order for us to do that in order for us to store that energy we need a fly rod and this is why fly rods are so wobbly or wiggly they're not they're not they don't lack power or anything like that but it's in order for the rod to store that energy that is generated through the casting stroke the rod's weight the weight of the line and the intended application should all be matched together so this is a five weight or a nine foot five weight rod built by epic by the way this is a cool video or series that we did a couple of months ago where we built this rod from scratch so if you are interested in building your own rod be sure to check that out we'll leave the links to that in the description down below too but anyway so this is a nine foot five weight this is a five six weight reel this is a shulton cr3 and then the line is a sinking line but it's rated as a five weight line so it has enough weight to load a five weight rod if you match all of these things up you get a great casting combination and this is what helps you get your fly to your target and that's it this is the absolute minimum gear that you need to start catching a fish on fly yes i know some of you will say that there are a couple of other essentials that that will make your life easier and I agree, there are, there are accessories that makes your life a lot easier. But, but with this rig, if you have flies, you have line, you have reel, maybe backing even, and a fly rod, and tippet, and leader, and all of, all of this stuff that we just went through, you can catch a fish on fly. And this is more than enough to get you started. 
If you found this video helpful and insightful, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. Then we can let you know as soon as we release any future videos like these. Until next time, cheers.